shows you what a professional I am. I'm sitting here doing commentaries and had the sound turned off. Well, oh well. Could be worse. Anyway, uh, to refresh commentary, we're here. We're commemorating the 46th anniversary of the Compton Cafeteria Riot. Uh, I believe that was in, let's see, 1966, 64. Let's see, it's 2012. What is 66, 46 years? Yeah, 19, 19, 1956. No, it couldn't be that early. Because I'm, I'm 52. 1966, there we go. And ever since I started using a calculator, uh, my mathematics skills have really dropped off. Eh? But I'm not, I don't usually, uh, I usually let uh, my computer do most of the calculating. Glad to have you here and uh, watching. Uh, we're here at the intersection of Taylor and Market Street in the lovely mid-market area of San Francisco. I'm Freeman Sullivan, and if you have any commentary or any chat, please log on to the social stream to the right, and you can use your Facebook, Twitter, or use stream account to do so. I always invite people to uh, log on to the chat. I love hearing from you, and then uh, if you have anything you want to say, uh, I'm glad somebody said something about my audio. <laughs> I'm such a dimwit sometimes. To think I'm smart, but I'm not always the smartest guy. So thanks. And then uh, that's how we uh, how we roll in this world. We're united. Uh, and if, we're, if we stay united, well, then we have much more of a chance at succeeding in affecting change in society, positive changes. Because one man is not an island, and we can't do everything by ourselves, although we would like to think so. So, glad to have you here today. It's running a little commentary before the march heads up here. The event was uh, slated to start at 5 o'clock, so I'm thinking that they're going to roll down here in about another 10 minutes, and uh, then we'll move on to the intersection of Turk and Taylor. Uh, one nice thing about being a live streamer here in San Francisco is that uh, this is a city of political protest. Uh, people in San Francisco pride themselves on uh, being educated about the issues and having a definite opinion. This is very much a radical city. For the, uh, there's a definite radical 10% that live here. And uh, everybody else, uh, I think there's like 5% Republican and pretty much everybody else falls in uh, the Democratic Party. Uh, I don't think we've had a viable Republican candidate here in San Francisco in many, 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 many years. Uh, or Maria Mayoral, since the 50s at least. So we are a very liberal city here, very much a city of iconoclasts. And uh, here uh, being different is very much celebrated. Uh, for a number of years, this was the capital of gay culture in the, of the world. And uh, I don't think so much now. I think other cities have uh, superseded San Francisco in that category. Uh, this is the capital of cannabis in the world, which we'll proudly, uh, proudly uh, maintain. You can pretty much smoke pot here on the streets of San Francisco and not have to worry about getting arrested. Uh, the only thing they'll really go after you for is sales on the street. So this is a pretty liberal city when it comes to marijuana and cannabis. Uh, we're waiting to start the we're waiting the march here. Uh, they'll probably be going down UN Plaza, if I'm not mistaken. And we're uh, right up here about a block away, as you can see. And I'm going to pick them up right here on Market and Taylor, one block east. So I'm glad you could join us. Uh, please log on to the social stream again. Uh, not enough people do so. You can actually communicate here with me uh, while I'm doing the chat, or while I'm doing the commentary. And I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. If you want to say hi to somebody who's at the protest, you want to leave a message, you can use me as a go-between. I am here to serve you. I am your representative. So thanks for being here and thanks for watching.
and uh, I'll try to keep things interesting for you. Uh, let's say that uh, San Francisco hanging out is a very much, uh, even though we're sitting by laws that we have here, hanging out and loitering is a very much a San Francisco tradition. Uh, you wouldn't know it anymore. Uh, Willie Brown had all the seats taken out on Market Street, so unless you got a wheelchair or you bring your own seat, there's no place to sit down, which is kind of crazy, but that's kind of the way San Francisco is. A very crazy schizophrenic city uh, who really, uh, whose identity is based upon nonconformity. So we we pride ourselves on nonconformity here, and uh, that's that. Oh, Scott, nice to see you here. Uh, I know you work just around the corner from me. I haven't seen you in a while, so I'm looking forward to seeing you, as always. Uh, let's see this building right here. Uh, it was the, is the, geez, I used to work there too. Back in, oh, the Warfield building. It's a historic building here in San Francisco. Uh, used to be offices there inside. Not anymore. It's all turned uh, into condos, which none of the people in the neighborhood that live here can actually afford. Uh, San Francisco living costs are very, very expensive among the highest in the country and it's not so much even if you have the money here uh, it's a question of, of uh, your timing and finding the right space because even if you have enough money here you're never not necessarily going to find the place that you want to live in and that's my major complaint about living here in San Francisco is not only the cost but the availability of housing here uh, because of short nice sightedness of, of the city planners uh, they ripped out a lot of the affordable housing stock here in San Francisco. They ripped out a lot of the Section 8 housing that used to exist here in San Francisco and replaced it with, uh, like anywhere else, replaced it with with these crappy places that go for billions of dollars. Which simply, even though San Francisco is a nice place, why should you have to pay millions of dollars to live in a place that smells like piss? Uh, bottom line. That's the way I feel about it. Uh, I'm getting ready to uh, take a jaunt to the East Coast and uh, New York. I'll be uh, there uh, for Occupy Wall Street one year anniversary and all, all uh, related events. I hope to get around New York. I'm blessed with uh, some really good friends that live there so I'm looking forward to coming out. So if you're watching from New York, hello and I'll be there next month. I'll be in Washington, D.C. also next month. And I'm going to see if I can live stream there. I don't know if uh, I use Metro PCS uh, to stream with because I really can't afford anything else and really can't afford to spend $71 a month. But I like live streaming so much. so And I like communicating with you and I love you. So and I don't even want your donations, to be honest. Uh, if, you do, if you want to lay some pot on me when you see me in person, that's always welcome. But other than that... Uh, I'm free, and I really believe in the concept of free. That's why I'm at Freeman Sullivan on Twitter. And if you want to email me, uh, Freeman Sullivan at Gmail. So either one of those two options online. You can text me at 415-499-2780. That's my number. Uh, don't call me during the streams because I'll block you. Uh, I'll have to block you because uh, you'll take my stream out. So we're sitting here at the corner of Golden Gate, Taylor, and Market, uh, awaiting the march of the 46th anniversary of Compton Cafeteria. Should be here any any minute now, and uh, that'll catch up with the march then, hopefully. And if not, if I don't see anything in five or ten minutes, I'll uh, I'll roll up to the corner of Turk and Taylor. It's only a block away. Uh, Turk and Taylor was uh, one of the more was one of the more no notorious corners of the Tenderloin. There used to be uh, peep shows up here and little porno style uh, uh, theaters. Uh, whenever you'd go by the corner it always smelled like, uh, well, I'm going to uh, make this one uh, NC-17. Uh, it always smelled like jizz, uh, believe it or not. You walk past the places and uh, get the smell of jizz coming out of the door. Uh, but San Francisco is like that. And uh, if you don't like people, I uh, shouldn't be here in San Francisco. Go move out to Marin or, 
or out, there's plenty of countryside out there if you don't like people because you got to like people living here in San Francisco so I'm gonna pull my butt out of this chair in a couple of minutes and see uh, if I can see if anybody's out here glad to have you all on board and uh, uh, if you want to come down to San Francisco and come to this rally which should be happening in a few minutes uh, you can take the BART and get off at Powell Street which is one block in that direction or you can take get off at Civic Center which is one block from that direction and walk one block most PD lines run down Market Street of course so uh, maybe you want to come here in person which is always better than watching me on the live stream can't say that enough I'd rather have you here physically uh, but if you don't have the time this is the second best option eh? and I'm always glad to have you here watching and of course uh, if you can't make it I'll be here I'm your proxy I'm yours in your service so if you have any questions or anything you'd like to know just get on the social stream with your Facebook Twitter or you stream account and I'll be happy to chat with you that's why I love doing this live stream because it is two-way communication. This area used to be the theater district of San Francisco back in the 40s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. There used to be uh, a lot of uh, theater activity. Uh, uh, that's one of the reasons why this area has fallen on hard times is because all the movie theaters have closed and basically all the theaters have gone dark uh, due to the internet and DVDs and whatnot. And because uh, this area used to be open and now it's basically most of the most of the storefronts are uh, boarded up. Uh, there is going to be some huge commercial development in this area uh, right in the area where the camera is being pointed. Uh, it's going to start probably around winter time and they want to build another uh, San Francisco Center style uh, retail uh, mall I guess there it'll be they put bathrooms in there I'm okay with it <laughs> I don't mind on I don't mind having all the stores here just give me a second here I gotta let go of the camera I love doing live streams and uh, I consider it uh, an honor to be. Uh... Oh, yeah, what can I do for you? What's that? What do you want? I know it sounds petty as hell if I get you. You want a cigarette? I was, yeah, or your sister. No, I'd rather really give you a cigarette right here. I know it's pretty petty as hell, that's why I didn't. I was like in the chores of man, but I just feel good. I just got a job in the middle of all of it. We're nervous and you know what I'm saying? Thank you so much. No problem. I got a job in the middle of here now. Chipotle. Oh, yeah? Yeah, down here on uh, Market. That's good. I hope you get hired. Yes, yes, tomorrow. Right. Yeah, so. I yeah, I did restaurant work for a number of years. Call my nerves down. Right. Boy, You'll be alright. Just have yeah. confidence in yourself, you oh, know? Oh, definitely. Yeah, 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 definitely. Right. Yeah, definitely. Hey, yeah, you got anything? I got viewers here on the line here. You, you got anything you want to say to them? Sorry, I said I got I got about uh, let's see I got about a dozen viewers here online. You got anything you want to say to them out there? Uh, God bless them and have a good night. All right. <laughs> so what's your name anyway? Curtis. Sorry. Nice to meet you, brother. Nice to meet you. I just feel good, man. So don't buy me if I do that. Uh, it's all right, brother. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Uh oh, I hear something. I think our march is uh, getting ready to get here. Let me get up out of this chair. Here it is. I told you we'd catch up to it. There we go, it's right across the street. Looks like a nice crowd of about 30 or 40 people. I'm gonna catch it up here. I'm walking around now. So you guys should be proud of me. I see some people I recognize there. Hey Terry, how you doing? Oh yeah, I'm walking now, so. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing much better. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm getting ready to go to the East Coast. How's your uh, chronic fatigue syndrome? Uh, I took care of it. I don't believe you know, that. I mean, you know what it was? You do so much stuff. I, I'm like laying around. I'm so tired all the time. I can't believe it. Uh, well, see what it was. I had some dental stuff, right? And uh, it affected my lymph nodes. I think I'm gonna get rid of this cigarette. It affected my lymph nodes, and uh, so consequently, uh, that really that's. I had it happen about 20 years ago, so I started taking echinacea for it, and it, echinacea knocks it right out. So I'm feeling better. We're getting ready to go up to one of the more. I got a live stream going here, so you can say hi to the live stream viewers. This is Terry. Hi, live stream Right, she's a great San Francisco activist. I'm gonna catch up to the bar right, she knows what's going on here in San Francisco. <laughs> Local politics. She's the queen. I'm slowly making my way up the street here. I know I lag. That's why I didn't go into March. But I'm on two feet now, which is a huge step from just as short as a few months ago. So just bear with me. I'll make it. One of the grittier areas of San Francisco, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take a seat. We're at the corner of Turk and Taylor, yeah. one of the grittier areas. Uh, say hi to the live stream people out there. <laughs> Got a nice crowd. Pretty diverse. Oh good, my Facebook uh, okay, everybody, we're gonna have a notifications are up again. Tenderloin Uptown Museum that's coming up pretty soon. Anyway, that's why we're here. <laughs> On August evening in 1966, transgender women and gay men banded together to fight against oppression after a police officer harassed one of them at Gene Compton's cafeteria. This confrontation was the first known full scale riot for transgender and gay rights in U.S. history. It galvanized the community for having new public policies and social services that improve the lives of local transgender people. Uh, Uptown Tenderloin Historic District, 1966. Glad <laughs> to have you here watching. Here uh, in the neighborhood, drop down. We're here at Taylor and Turk. So one of the things, guys, if you want to try to gather up here, <laughs> this this space is a space that was claimed by the queer homeless youth, <laughs> by the trans women who named themselves to be the Screaming Queens. <laughs> and a group of pastors and those youth and those queens worked together to get federal poverty money for the Tenderloin that enabled almost all of the old organizations that you see around here to exist. The famous feeding program at Glide was started by queer homeless youth who decided to feed each other. But what they discovered is that when they wanted to have community, they weren't allowed to gather in groups in the neighborhood. Sound familiar? <laughs> and at times, the police would look at them and try to make them move along. Sound familiar? Yeah. Yeah. And so, 
So they didn't protest by sweeping the streets because the city left the trash on the sidewalks in hopes they could get more money to clean the neighborhood up. And the youth declared, we are not trash. You can't sweep us away. And when they got tired of the business owners not letting them drink coffee and hang out in their spaces, and a police officer came in and they said, we're not going to take it anymore. And so the queen screamed, right? Yeah, that's right. And so I have, I have blessed this monument made by the community with salt shakers and with coffee creamer. And I bought, brought a sugar shaker because a sugar shaker is thought to be the very first thing that went through the window. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted housing. They wanted jobs. They wanted respect. They wanted equality. They wanted more options than just sex work. And the politicians didn't always listen. And so I take this salt shaker and I put it on the ground and I'm going to smash it to remind us that we don't have justice or equality yet. I'm not going to throw it through a window, but I am going to show that we are still in need of healing and help and money and housing. And here's hoping I can actually do this. Yeah! The salt shakers broke, but they were united that day. The salt shakers broke, but they were united that day. The salt shakers broke, but we were united that day. And we will not lose our saltiness. And so, one of our first speakers, for whom I know knows the tradition of breaking glass, is a supervisor from the Castro, Supervisor Scott Weiner. Because speaking requires listening, and listening calls us to speak. And so here's what Scott has to say to us today. Hi, everyone. So, you know, in the many, many years that our community has sought justice and gotten justice, uh, the trans community has always, every single time, been in the forefront. And so often, we, we're led by the trans community, and then the trans community gets left behind. And we need to stop that from happening. And if you think about what are the most, some of the most important things that we as a society can give to people that people need, it's jobs, it's health care, it's being safe in your community, it's housing. And in each and every one of these areas, the trans community, we've let the trans community fall behind and it is our job to come together as a community and make sure that all of us move forward together. It's not acceptable that trans people in California are more likely to have a college degree but have a much, much higher unemployment rate. It's not acceptable that health care plans, even if you're lucky enough to have health care plans, that health care plans are still discriminating, even in San Francisco, against trans people from getting full health benefits. And the rate of violence against our trans brothers and sisters has to go down, and we have to all work together to make that happen. I will continue to always stand with our trans community and work together to make sure that we all move forward. And I look forward to that. Thank you. And someone who knows a lot about the needs of the trans community right now and is fighting for us every day, Mr. Mason Davis. Yay! I am humbled to be with everybody today in solidarity and with Felicia and in memory of the people who started this movement, this LGBT movement, happened here. It happened with the Screaming Queens actually saying, finally, no more. No more! No more violence, no more harassment, no more homelessness, no more being treated by trash. We are people with human and, and civil rights that will be recognized. 
will be recognized by the police will be recognized by the social service agencies and will be recognized by ourselves. We still have a lot of work to do. At Transgender Law Center, we've heard already this year from 1,800 people who have contacted us because they're experiencing discrimination, harassment, and violations of their basic human rights in 2012. 45 years ago, the Queens here told us that we have to stand up for ourselves if we want to people to stand with us. 46. 46 years ago. Thank you. Hold <laughs> <laughs> people accountable, folks. Queer numbers, queer numbers. We know that safety and harassment are ever-present concerns, especially for our trans sisters of color. We know that transgender people, even in California today, with some of the best laws that we couldn't have imagined, 46 years ago, that one out of five of us are still homeless. And over half of the homeless folks are being turned away from homeless shelters that refuse to recognize our basic dignity and rights. We have to stop that. And each month, each week, we continue to hear about transgender women across the country that are being murdered merely for being who they are and for not having access to the basic support and jobs that we need to take care of ourselves and our family. That has to stop. I see this as a relay race. A relay race that was started in 19, 1966 and one that has been passed from generation to generation, from activist to activist. And I urge you all who are here, especially the youth, to continue taking that baton and passing that baton and we, until we finally win this race until we finally achieve justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. And if you've ever been told that you're the future of this community, it's a lie. You are this community, especially the youth. You're our leaders right now. And so one of the elders who's been a mentor to many of us and a screaming queen for as long as screaming has been possible, right? Ms. Felicia Flaves. And there's another one, uh, Tamara Chung over there. Anyway, my name is Felicia Alessandro. I am a screaming queen, a pioneer, a legend, an icon, and a diva. Yeah. I've been here since the 1960s. We were a community that we had to be who we were meant to be. Uh, this was a place where everybody could come in and organize and make sure everybody was still alive because in, in our time when we were sissies and dressing up like girls, nobody would give us a job. So the next thing possible thing to do was to be in prostitution. And we made a good job of it because we made a living out of it. So uh, there was the El Rosa Hotel right down the street, which is the, uh, was a transgender bar. Thompson's. There was the 121 Club was a Rossi Rossi bar at, in the 60s. That was a transgender bar. Chuckers uh, next to it was a uh, it was a coffee house where you you would have to walk in at your own risk because it could be raided at any time and they would take you to jail for even walking down the street, obstructing a sidewalk, <laughs> or just female impersonation and. We had to do what we had to do, and that night was terrible. It was two days of horrible uh, rioting, but uh, some of the, a lot of us went to jail, and a lot of us, but they dropped the charges because nobody could prove that we were the ones that did it, so they got away with it. I am here because I want to make sure that our community is always, are the last one. It's, it's not the LGBT community to me. It's the gay community because in my time in the early season there were black uh, Mexicans, Asians, white and we were all a community we were all together there was no separation of LGBT to me and I don't I will never accept it I will never accept queer but the, the community nowadays accepts it so so lightly but the young people of today don't know what we went through to get to where we are today. It was horrible. 
it was, I mean, a lot of us were killed, raped, thrown into jail. And, but we're still, uh, there was, there's two seniors over there that survived it, Judy and Tamara. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but anyway, I have never been so overwhelmed since the, the, the time that they put this pack there with Cecilia Chuck. Uh, and a lot of the community, the community came, and it was all about the uh, black, what, black, what was that guy's name, the police one, Blackstone? Blackstone. Elliot. Elliot Blackstone. It was all about him, and, and what happened is that, what's really sad about this whole thing, is that we're the ones that started the gay, okay, all you transgenders, transsexual, be very happy and honored because you're the guy, you're the people that started the gay movement here in San Francisco. It wasn't the gays, it wasn't the lesbians. That's right. It was the transgender community that started. Not to put down the gay and lesbians, but anyway, <laughs> it's just that I'm 66 years old. I don't give a shit what people think of me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not. I don't kiss nobody's ass anymore. Like I used to because I wanted to be at Even Stevens, but now I am so overwhelmed that this has happened. And this, this is a, this is history in the making, because this is our first march, our first gathering. And thank you, Scott, for being here. Um, you're one of my heroes now. You weren't before, but you are now. <laughs> it's a new day. It's to. Uh, one thing, my last word is to say, have an open mind and an open heart to each other. We're all together. We're not separate. Just because some people got money doesn't mean shit, you know? We're all together. We're fighting the same fight, and we need to stay together and be together and love each other and take care of each other because there's a lot of seniors in these buildings that are still in the closet because they're afraid to come out because of what happened to us in the 60s and the 70s and the, in the 50s too because there was, there was a lot of stuff. There was a lot of gay bars here in San Francisco, a lot of them, especially here in the Tenderloin. This was the gay mecca. Then they went to the Mission, the Polk Street, and they went to Castro. But you know something, the transgender, we, we, didn't, we did not know what the closet meant because if we would have stayed in the closet, we wouldn't be who we are today. The gay and lesbians stayed in the closet, made their money, made their education, and that's how I, what I that's what I feel. But the transgenders could not do it because they had to be who we are today. And I'm very happy. Thank you very much. This has overwhelmed me that you all are here to honor us because it's about fucking time that we get put first in that community because we're the ones that started this movement and we should be praised for it. Thank you so much. And in a little while, uh, I have a Screaming Queen's cake that's going to come out. It's at Aunt Charlie's right now. So we're going to bring it out and so everybody can have a piece and it's a beautiful cake. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Maggie. Oh, has a new egg spin. Give me that thing. The new egg spin. Yeah, give me that thing. The new egg spin of today is the Trash March. Oh, I love these kids. They finally made it happen. Gwen, Parth, and Louise. Okay, go sit and down. It's not an infomercial for the Trash March. How do you do this Just thing? Just talk right into it. Honey. You know, this isn't about youth. It's about us older people that were here. Hi, Becky. When, hi, Terry. When, when I was reading the webpage, some person said, where are the youth speakers? Well, there was no one there speaking for us, like me and Dee Dee. We were the original streetwalkers here. We were the screaming queens. We owned these streets. We worked these bars. Not these gay guys. Not these youths and not these lesbians. It was us sissies. We were known as the girls. Yes, the girls. And we had to do things. And now's the time to do things for your time slot. Okay? All right. We did our share. 
I did my share to put our name, the T's, on the LGBT center. Yeah. I did things for the street workers here when no one else did. This is where HIV started with the girls and this is why we said we weren't going to take it anymore. We're not going to let these girls die at the, at the hotels anymore, the SROs. So we demanded our rights. And when I went to Sacramento for two years, on a two-year term for the California Community Planning Working Group, I made sure transgender people were listened to. I held groups. I made the priority from number 16 to number 7 in two years. That's why we all got funding here. And this is what upsets me now is we don't have nothing here except the API Wellness Center for transgender people. And heavens knows I worked hard to get them to come down to the Tenderloin all these years. So, remember, it was old timers like us that fought for your rights. Not the youth, not anyone else. We did it because we got tired of being pushed around by the cops. Right. We got arrested for not even doing anything but walking. I know people that have been thrown up against the wall and, and strip searched right there for doing nothing but just looking and being themselves. And we were ourselves. Thank you. generation of, of screaming queens or however she wants to self-identify. She's one of the, the queer homeless youth, the formerly homeless youth who have studied the vanguard youth of the 60s and she's traveled across to about seven different cities and met with queer homeless youth in shelters around the country to share the story of the Compton Cafeteria riot and of the vanguard youth that are currently gathering. Everybody, put it together for Ms. Mia Too Much! Hi. I promised Megan I wouldn't speak, but then I, I, I'm a diva. Okay. <laughs> um, Felicia definitely in inspires me. Um, yeah, so you did hear, right, that this started 46 years ago. Um, Anyone know when Stonewall started? 69. Three years later. Three years later. Woo! Okay, so I just wanted to throw that out there that it really did start here. The LGBT rights movement started here. Read the plaque. It's nice. Come back. Visit the plaque. It's not going anywhere. You don't have to come back just on the anniversary when you walk in the Tenderloin late at night trying to get that money. Oh, wait, I'm talking about myself. You better <laughs> just walk by, remember that you are not alone, that there are people who came before you and they fought for LGBT rights. Um, and, you know, it's, it is about the elders who gave a lot of their um, time and energy to change the situation dramatically for us. And I think that we have changed it a lot um, in ways that they wouldn't imagine. Um, but I think also if, when looking at these signs, um, you know, 46 years later, we are still fighting for the same thing, and that's so tiring, so tiring. Like, are you serious? Like, we still have, like, half of the, or 33% of the hate crimes in San Francisco are against trans women of color. In San Francisco, really? We still have policing of our communities by not letting us sit on the sidewalk, harassing us and further criminalizing homeless youth further criminalizing LGBT youth, specifically homeless uh, youth in the Castro who have even the harshest policies in the entire city, in Harvey Milk Plaza, in Jane Warner Plaza, named after LGBT heroes who did work for our community and their spaces are actively policed 
and harassing LGBT youth. There's a still a lot that we need to do to stop this. Yes, it is called capitalism. <laughs> so continue doing the work that you do, continue getting plugged into Leah, continue get plugged into the Transgender Law Center and do something for our community. Thank you. If you have sidewalk chalk, one of the things we'd like you to do is write you can write thank yous to the, the elders who have who have paved this road for us, but stay, again, stay on the sidewalk. Um, you can write messages of hope that you have in the future, but let's leave our mark on this space that the, the current people gathered here want to leave as a mark. Um, and for our, our final speaker, we have Mr. Coy Ellison. Thank you. Well, every, everyone who knows me knows that I, I pretty much have a big mouth, so I probably don't need I'd this. Okay. Well, yeah. I've been in the city about 30 years, and I was a runaway youth. And I have to say, a lot of these screaming queens and transgender and runaway youth became my tribe of equality and safety. If it wasn't for a lot of these wonderful people that have been spat upon, arrested for just being themselves, and still yet today suffer bigotry in our bars, in our community, which is very shameful, because it's our unity that is our strength, I would probably be dead now. And my partner and I wouldn't be able to walk down the street holding hands without being shot or arrested. And I just want to say thank you to the Screaming Queens and everybody here that cares enough about all of us being a community as a heart, as a whole, not just a gender or a race. Thank you for being here because we help each other survive and get through everything and move forward. Thank you. Yay. So let's eat some cake and let's mark up some sidewalks. And I believe Felicia has brought the names of many of the people who are part of the Compton's Cafeteria ride that will go up on the wall. So pay some homage to those names. So let's get right then, get some, some beverages and some snacks. Thanks for coming, everybody. No more silent tea. Take care, Thanks for coming. Huh? Hey, what's up there? I want to say hi to our, our viewers out there. This is Scott. I met him at Occupy. He's a great activist. He works. He works too. He works too much, though. I do. Like a half time, a job and a half in one building. But we're glad he's here anyway. Yeah, I know, finally. Oh, we're going to call these. We're going to call these. I'm excited. So I'm going to uh, we'll going to New York yeah. pretty soon. Yeah, I'm excited about that. You know, yeah, and I've been able to network with my New York friends. I won't have to worry about paying for hotel rooms and crap like awesome, that. So awesome. that's good because it's uh, too expensive. Way too expensive. Tell him to turn around. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, so watch out, East Coast, here I come. <laughs> you know, I've been feeling a lot better, so. Good. I saw, the other day I saw you walking to the post office. I was like, but I was on the train, but I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting better, so. You know, I'm trying to walk more and more, you know. And I, got, I finally got my personal autonomy back, right? Yeah, yeah, so I it's, bet. That's something I didn't have, uh, you know, and I was like sitting back in frustration when Occupy started because I was actually supposed to be in New York and everything, right? And uh, I couldn't go, and I'm fucking in the wheelchair, you know. And, yeah. But it got me out of the house, and uh, got me started live streaming. I'm, my whole life changed because of Occupy. Yeah, like, completely, a lot right? of us, yeah. And, uh, Some of us have, like, deep depressions, and, yeah. you know. Yeah, I quit drinking, Yeah. right? Uh, just a bunch of good stuff came into my life because of Occupy. Yeah. And I'm real grateful for that. Now I'm back on the top of my game. Um, Personally, I'm doing a lot of cord support. I'm going to get get revved up with that um, because that's something I'm really good at, and I've done it for a number of years. And uh, I know how the game is played, and uh, I have actually done a lot of good for a lot of people in the past, and I want to be able to continue that. You know, uprising's coming. So yeah, well, you know, it's like Jesse. Uh, you know, the guy was uh, was in jail for the brick. The brick throwing into it. Yeah, well, I'm not going to pick up cigarettes <laughs> around here. Um, I mean, he is, you know, he's got problems and stuff, but he doesn't deserve to go to jail no. for like 20 years or whatever, right? So uh, that's why I thought I'd jump into the game, and his case kind of motivated me, you know. But I know there's other people like Pirate Mike and 
other people that are facing charges. And even though I know that they're competent, I know what they know what they're doing, that they would be able to, they would benefit from the, from like a legal support. Yeah, that's all, right. Just just being at court really helps. To yeah. Support and court support. Yeah, and coordinating it is a real big deal because you don't have to be at every court appearance. Yeah, because you know, we don't have. Most of them are generally just.